I know there's a lot of anger and frustration and fear, but today is not about blame for the victim or for the people that we may hold responsible. We are here today to remember the needless death of a young man, Rob O'Connor. I sincerely hope that Rob's death is not in vain and is a real turning point for our city's authorities that the most vulnerable members of the community are given the love and support they desperately need. In the meantime, Call to be Kind and the Rucksack Project Chancellor will, with the community support, continue, con continue to, to do all we can to improve the lives of our homeless friends, as I'm sure Sanctus will, who provide invalu an invaluable free cafe to all in need without judgment or prejudice. Amen. So if we could perhaps just have a, a minute silence so we can reflect on yeah. Rob. Thank you. Left on the doorstep, I am freezing to death. My lips are blue, my fingertips icy. I am shaking. It's below zero. There is nowhere to go, no shelter. I can't get out of this cold. Teeth chattering, a single tear frozen to my face. This is no place for grace. My feet frozen to the ground. I am anything but found. Left on the streets, can't find anything to eat. I wish I was in a warm home, but I have no home. The streets are where I sleep. Um, now we have some ribbons here, which if well, Paolo plays out a little number for us, if you could, yeah. um, if I could ask you individually, one by one, to take a ribbon and tie it to the railings around this tree opposite, yeah. in memory of, of Rob. Okay, um, I've got the ribbons here, if uh, people want to come and get a ribbon. Do you want that one? Andy, have we got any more? Good. Um, I've got a load more here. We're going to run out in a minute. Yeah, 
my boy, yes. Yeah, I'll call the press. Um, is it okay if I speak to him? I don't know. Do you want to speak to the press? He's cool with it. Okay, do you want to stand around the back of him, Dad? Has he got a bar? Yes, got They're all here. The okay. We can still talk to him here. Hi, what's Hello. your name? Christopher. Christopher? Yep. And where do you come from, Christopher? Chelmsford. How old are you? Nine. Nine years of age? Yep. Why are you here tonight? Have you been dragged here by your father? Or Not really. We had a family discussion to come out here. Oh, you had a vote? Yeah. And oh. we all voted to come out because it's quite tragic that a homeless person has just died. And it's, well, it's sad that no one's done anything like donate money. But I know that people, now that people are trying to save homeless people, they're out on the streets freezing in need of a home. Well, it's lovely to see you here. And what have you got there in your hand? Hold it up. A candle. All right. And what does the candle mean? Does it mean anything? Mm, I think it's something to remember. I'm not exactly sure. Because I'm not good at stuff. You must be very proud of your son, Dad. Oh, I am now, yes. What do you think about what he said? Oh, I agree with him entirely. I think it's good that everybody's out here. Uh, nice to see more people, but uh, it's, it's, a, it's a crowd and uh, I think it's important these events are, are marked and remembered. Why on earth do you care about a nobody? Well, I've never met the person, I don't know the person, but it's, you know, it, it, it's the 21st century. Uh, we're in one of the most advanced economies in the world. This sort of thing shouldn't be happening. Are you ashamed of the city of Chelmsford? I don't think we can blame Chelmsford, it's happening all over the country. I'm ashamed of the country. And is it political? Is it all the fault of the Tories? And when Labour gets in, everything will be all right? I suspect it probably uh, won't happen that way. Um, I think there's a lot of complicated reasons behind it. But uh, the ultimate reason is that people don't care enough. And that's not political. And you come with your son and daughter? And my daughter, yes. yes to make a statement? Well, just to, just to show that we care. Thank you very much for coming. If you'd like to say something? Uh, just, I agree with my husband and my son completely. Oh, sorry, completely. I thought it was his daughter. You okay? No, it's his daughter. Right, let's have you both together. Right. Okay, well, here's the, here's the entire family. What are you guys' first names? Emma and uh, Maddie. What made you come down here? Because my wife would hardly let me come down here at all. Well, um, we heard about it through a friend today, didn't we? Yeah. And just thought we'd come and show our support and... Uh, sort of mini protest but okay yeah. you can come out but is it going to change you are you going to help any of these organizations that help people um, well we like to think we would don't we yeah. it's just yeah it's just more showing support really for yeah people this sort and of thing have you be uh, has it moved you tonight yes yeah in the, what the way? story moved me actually i just I yeah just feel desperately really sorry for these people it's so sad it's tragic and it shouldn't be happening in this day and age. No. And have you got a message for a Chelmsford Council? Yes, sort it out. It's Stephen Robinson, leader of the Liberal Democrats on Chelmsford Council. And why are you here this cold evening? It's not just me. I'm really impressed that, oh, that about 50 Chelmsford residents have turned up in the snow when the temperature is below 0 degrees centigrade um, to say that something needs to be done about rough sleeping. Um, it's a, it's a really important demonstration of, of uh, how concerned Chelmsford residents are. And it's great to see uh, over the last week 
Um, a lot of people have volunteered to help uh, with food and clothing uh, to help rough sleepers. Your lo long term, there's got to be a, a wraparound solution. It's, there's some mental health and addiction services uh, have got to be provided for everybody. Uh, the county council cut the mental health in it, uh, for the coming year um, two weeks ago, um, and mental health should be treated as equally as physical health, and that's what the Liberal Democrats have been saying throughout their time in government. We were moving in the right direction. Unfortunately, the Conservatives since 2015 have continued to cut mental health provision. Um, and, and that's just not good enough. Um, we need the, the our councils up and down the country, but particularly here in Chelmsford, uh, need to be working on the, the wraparound services so that people get mental health support to, to help them get back on track um, with addiction services, dependency, and then also with advice on how to get into employment again. But this is so costly, Stephen. They're the Paul Gascoigne's probably paying five thousand pounds to go into rehab for a top up. It's going to be a lot, it's, and that's a day. It's a, it's a lot. It's long term. If you look at the cost overall, it's going to be cheaper to solve the problem short term and avoid the long term problems. Why did you come tonight? I wanted to uh, show that, as the leader of the opposition on Chelmsford Council, I think this is important and I think the council needs to act sooner rather than later. Why is it important? Is it a turning point? Will things change? I hope things will change, but the, what I want to, to say is that every human being has rights. Uh, nobody is a second-class you know, second citizen. Nobody chooses to sleep rough. Sometimes it happens um, through a collection of unfortunate circumstances. Um, and, you know, Lots and lots of people are only one payday away from being homeless and rough sleeping is the, the worst end of the homelessness situation. Um, we have about 340 homeless families in Chompsford at the moment, that's over a thousand people. Um, 15 to 20 of them are rough sleepers, um, but a lot of them are being kept uh, in bed and breakfast and nightly let accommodation and we've really got to solve the whole problem. What about £800,000 that the council wonderfully are going to spend? Roughly where on earth is that going? A lot of that is just going on this bed and breakfast and nightly let accommodation when people are, when the council is finding people on a night by night basis in the private rented sector. Um, and that is a ridiculous waste of money looked at uh, as the, at the big picture. It's got to be spent because we've got this problem but the long term solution is that the council should be using the fact that interest rates are at record lows and should be borrowing money to invest in proper temporary housing um, so that we can avoid putting anybody in bed and breakfast. Very emotional, very cold. Um, it, it was a very cold evening. It, it was important we went ahead, obviously, even when the weather is like this. I mean, I all, to call it off. Uh, all, all we were asking people to do is come out for, for half an hour to show their respects. Yes, the weather is bad, but we're only coming out of our warm homes for half an hour. Um, we've got people that are actually having to live in the streets like this, in these conditions. And that's why it's important that uh, we went ahead um, tonight. Um, the other thing that we really wanted to get across and something that's been very important to me and I know the other people that have been behind organising this this evening is that there mustn't be this victim blaming that's going on. The idea that there was a bed for Rob is not true. Um, the only shelter locally, they will only touch people with addiction issues. Uh, they will not touch people with addiction issues. No one will touch people with addiction issues. We're going around in circles here. There is an elephant in the room. Unless somebody starts a, a bomb-proof shelter uh, for people with addiction problems, it's not going to happen. So well, who's going to start a place for the well, we, we need, we, we, addiction we, problems? We, well, we need to be demanding more action from, from the authorities. I, I don't think it's right that we as a society have ended up where, we, where it's just left to charities to look after people on the streets. We used to have something called a welfare state that was there for the people. You know, this is Chelmsford. And we are, you know, this is one of the uh, rich, it's a very wealthy city in the sixth richest country in the world. Nobody should be dying on the streets in the middle of winter because because we can't provide a bed for them. We as a society have found, rather than victim blaming the individual, rather than blaming Rob and his addiction issues, no, when this is happening, we as a society have found. That's what is wrong and that's the message that we should be sending out.